Hello, my name is Bernard Uvenis. This is a presentation on something that I care about, glaciers. Glaciers are one of four major substores included in the cryosphere. What exactly are glaciers? Glaciers are large masses of ice formed from snow in areas with cool summers and large snowfalls. The major types of glaciers include alpine glaciers, ice sheets, and ice caps. Let's discuss the properties and characteristics of alpine glaciers first. Alpine glaciers, also known as valley or mountain glaciers, fill the valleys of mountains, as you can see in the picture to the right. They appear on every continent except for Australia. Alpine glaciers pluck and grind rock as they flow, creating U-shaped valleys. In the picture to the left, you can see large boulders that have been plucked and placed into a valley by glaciation. Moving on, we will discuss the other major glacier types, ice sheets and ice caps. Ice sheets are very large glaciers that cover entire continents. Spanning greater than 50,000 kilometers wide, the only two ice sheets that currently exist are in Antarctica and Greenland. 10,000 years ago, during the last glacial period, ice sheets also covered Canada and North America, Northern Europe, and Southern South Africa. Here, we can see the edge of an ice sheet, also known as an ice shelf, from East Greenland. At less than 50,000 kilometers wide, ice caps are smaller than ice sheets. Ice caps exist as ice found at high latitudes. This includes the polar ice caps. They are also found at the top of mountains, as you can see from the mountains of Longyearbyen on the right. Next. We'll talk about how glaciers form and move. The glacial process occurs in four steps. First, snow must fall to supply the glacier with material. This snow continues to layer on top of existing snow, compacting it further as the mass gets heavier. Eventually, air is compressed out and the older snow is crystallized and turned into fern, a type of ice not seen anywhere else that has a consistency akin to sugar. After more than a hundred years of compaction, the ice solidifies further into what we finally know as glacial ice. This glacial ice is extremely heavy, and it's constantly under the effect of gravity, which causes it to flow very slowly from areas of higher to lower elevation. Finally, the glacier reaches the ablation zone, which is where the glacier begins to shrink. The supply isn't enough to keep up with the melt, and thus the glacier ends at what we call the terminus. At this point, pieces of ice can even break off from the glacier, creating icebergs if the terminus is over a body of water. Climate change is an impact of human activity caused by a release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases prevent heat from escaping into space, which warms the planet. As such, it's clear to see how such a change would drastically affect glaciers, objects made of ice. With warmer climates, glaciers would melt more, shrinking them and receding their ablation zones. This, coupled with overall less snowfall, could potentially lead to major deterioration of the world's glaciers. In fact, we have already seen this begun. We have already begun to see this in action, with sea ice extent and concentration rapidly declining over the years, as seen in the graph to the right. One overlooked issue that could arise from all this is that the albedo, or reflectiveness, of the planet will be lowered as a result. As glaciers continue to melt, less of the planet's surface will be covered in ice. This is important, because ice is excellent at reflecting light from the sun. So, there being less ice means that more light from the sun will be absorbed rather than reflected. This will then lead to more heating, and thus more melting. This is what we know as a positive feedback loop, where the heating of the planet will only lead to more heating. How would the melting of glaciers directly alter human life? A clear effect of all this glacial melting will be an overall rise of sea level. All that melted ice has to go somewhere in the end. In fact, Antarctica has enough glaciers that if they were all to melt, the sea level would rise 61 meters. If Greenland's were to melt, we would see a 7 plus meter rise in sea level. In the image to the right, 
you can see exactly what would happen if the sea were to rise only 7 meters. Large portions of the east coast extending into the Gulf of Mexico would be underwater. Millions of people would be severely affected. Glaciers are also used as a source of drinking water, supplying 22% of the population of fresh water. Nearly 2 billion people would find themselves lacking water if the glaciers were to disappear. Here's a picture of meltwater flowing down the side of an ice cap in Norway. As climate changes and warms up, we can expect to see more of this site. If nothing changes at all, the glacier itself could cease to exist sometime in the near future. After learning about the importance of glaciers, it's clear that preventing them from further melting should be a top priority. Perhaps too broad, yet extremely effective of a strategy, would be to stop or slow down climate change. This can be done by reducing the emission of greenhouse gases such as CO2 and methane into our atmosphere. By lowering our tolerance on energy sources such as fossil fuels and natural gas, and turning instead to renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, we would cut down on our total carbon footprint. Some scientists say that it's not enough to prevent further melting. We would need to start restoring lost glacial ice to escape the positive feedback loop. One such way would be through the use of wind-powered pumps. In this case, water is pumped from a body of water and sprayed on top of ice. The water freezes, thickening the ice. Already in use on small scales today, the plan would be to apply it on a much bigger scale by using wind to power much bigger pumps over longer distances. Thickening ice will lead to more reflection. With enough of this, we would eventually be pulled out of the positive feedback loop. Thank you so much for your time. As someone who has been to Iceland and has seen the beauty of glaciers firsthand, it's my hope that as more people become more aware of the growing environmental harm we are causing, more action will be taken to prevent these beautiful pieces of nature from fading into obscurity.